Hello and welcome to Wednesday evening prayer in this week of prayer for Christian unity. My name is Reverend Kate Heath. I'm the priest here in the Anglican parish of Lambton. This parish stands on Awabakal land. And I pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging and extend my respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. Today, as well as observing the week of prayer for Christian unity throughout uh, the churches in Australia, uh, we also in the Anglican Communion remember and give thanks for uh, the life and work of John and Charles Wesley, uh, evangelists, uh, teachers, uh, reformers and uh, advocates uh, for the marginalised. Uh, as we do so, uh, we particularly pray for those churches uh, throughout Australia and the world uh, who, who are influenced by John and Charles Wesley, uh, those of us who use their hymns, uh, those uh, who, whose churches were founded uh, by them and uh, those whose churches have been enriched by their ministry. Wednesday evening prayer can be found in your prayer book on page 404. This evening we have two psalms, Psalm 132 and Psalm 134. Psalm 132 can be found on page 364. Uh, and our reading comes uh, from Paul's letter uh, to the church in Corinth uh, as he talks about many members but one body. Uh, a very fitting reflection uh, as we pray for unity throughout Christ's body. On page 404, the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together. Glory to God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. God be gracious to us and bless us and make your face to shine upon us, that your way may be known upon earth, your salvation among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and govern the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Then the earth will bring forth its increase and God, our own God, will bless us. You, O oh God, will bless us, and all the ends of the earth will fear you. The day is now past, and the night is at hand. Let us pray with one heart and mind. Father of lights, receive the prayer and praise we offer you as our evening sacrifice. Make us a light for all the world, delivered by your goodness from all the works of darkness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Psalm 132, on page 364. Lord, remember David and all his trouble, how he swore an oath to the Lord and vowed to the Mighty One of Jacob. I will not enter the shelter of my house, nor climb into the comfort of my bed. I will not give sleep to my eyes, nor slumber to my eyelids, till I find out a place for the ark of the Lord, a dwelling for the mighty one of Jacob. Lo, we heard of it at Ephrathath. We found it in the fields of Ja'ar. Let us go to the place of his dwelling. Let us fall upon our knees before his footstool. Arise, O Lord, into your resting place, you and the ark of your might. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness, and let your faithful ones shout for joy. For the sake of David, your servant, do not turn away the face of your anointed. The Lord has sworn to David an oath which he will not break, one who is the fruit of your body, I will set upon your throne. If your children will keep my covenant and the commands which I teach them, their children also shall sit upon your throne forever. For the Lord has chosen Zion for himself. 
he has desired it for his habitation. This shall be my resting place forever. Here will I dwell, for my delight is in her. I will bless her provisions with abundance. I will satisfy her poor with bread. I will clothe her priests with salvation, and her faithful ones shall shout for joy. There will I make a horn to sprout for the family of David. I have prepared a lamp for my anointed. As for his enemies, I will cover them with shame, but upon his head shall his crown be bright. And Psalm 134. Come bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, you that by night stand in the house of our God. Lift up your hands toward the holy place and bless the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion, the Lord who made heaven and earth. God of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and of your great mercy keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 12, beginning at verse 14. Paul writes, Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, Because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again of the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and those members of the body that we think less honourable, we clothe with greater honour, and our less respectable members are treated with greater respect whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honour to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honoured, all rejoice together with it. Now, you are the body of Christ, and individually members of it. And God has appointed to the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But strive for the greater gifts, and I will show you a still more excellent way. May your word live in us and bear much fruit to your glory. On page 405 at the Magnificat, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour, who has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. God has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. The Lord has shown strength with his arm and scattered the proud in their conceit casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. 
God has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember the promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. A collect uh, as we remember the Wesleys today. Almighty God, who gave to your servants John and Charles special gifts of grace, to understand and teach the truth in Christ Jesus. Grant that, enlightened by this teaching, we may know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And a prayer from the National Council of Churches Australia in this week of prayer for Christian unity. God of justice and truth, we seek your guidance to embody the prophet's call to do good and to seek justice. May we grow with the courage and compassion of Christ and walk in the way of peace and reconciliation. May God's spirit enliven and embold us to stand in solidarity with others until all are treated with dignity and worth. May our holy living be a foretaste of the mercy and blessing of the reign of God. Amen. As the day draws to a close, as light falls, we bring to God those people and places most on our hearts this evening. Pray for those people we have encountered today. those stories of hardship and tragedy we have heard in the news today. We play, pray for those places and situations torn by discord and violence. We pray too for unity in diversity in our own communities, our parishes, the places where we work and learn, pray and play. May they be places where human dignity flourishes and your will is done. We pray for ourselves, for those burdens we are carrying. We pray that we may lay them down at your feet and rise refreshed in the morning to pick up uh, those we need to carry and to leave with you uh, those we have no need of any longer. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Lighten our darkness, Lord, we pray, 
and in your great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. May our Lord Jesus Christ and God our Father comfort our hearts and establish them in every good work and word. Amen. May God bless you with rest and refreshment this night. Thank you for joining me.